This is a 1920 Ruston Hornsby Model A1 Tora, so made in 1920 in Lincoln. Siemens have owned our business in Lincoln just over around 15 years, but the business itself goes back right to the 1840s. Ruston's back in the late 1800s and early 1900s were a, an agricultural machinery manufacturer. So they manufactured cranes, earth moving equipment, and over the years really got into the engine and power generation thing. But the background was very much in large industrial machinery. So obviously the factory here in Lincoln during the First World War was used to build various products for, for the war effort. And when that finished, it had a huge workforce employed here. Picture the scene in, in 1918, we got 12,000 people, the war finishes, the soldiers come back from, from fighting the war, and there's no orders in the factory, there's no work. They had the idea to start producing cars, which happened in, in 1919. There were around 1,500 cars produced, and we were fortunate in the 50s and 60s to rescue a two which had left the company. We chose 15, 20 years ago to say we really should either get rid of these, put them in a museum, or do something with them. And we chose to say, you know, this is a significant piece of heritage. We should invest some time and money. And we've had a group of people over the years have gradually worked on this and brought them back, at least one to the very good condition it's in today. But we do have plans to get them roadworthy. The cars are obviously the best part of 100 years old. You can't go to Halfords and buy a part for a Ruston car from 1922. So um, it's usually the ancillary parts like gears, steering boxes, etc. So they're more the problematic parts. The engines and major components are in fairly good shape. For the broken differential, we used conventional machining and uh, produced a new, a new differential. It wasn't easy. We had no drawings, but... Um, we can reverse engineer components, do a 3D model, recreate the drawing, and then remanufacture the parts. Where it got really interesting was the steering box, which was a casting, and they take a long time to get produced. The thing would have had to be machined from completely solid metal. We had no drawings. The advent of the latest scanning and 3D printing technology, however, is completely game-changing in terms of this. Additive manufacturing is a, a pretty new manufacturing technique. I think the good thing to understand about that is if you can draw it, you can print it. So really the challenge was getting the drawing of the component, which doesn't exist. So the broken component had to be more or less stuck back together and so they could get a CAD drawing from it. We received it in order to do a structured light scan and that basically gave us a digital 3D CAD model. Added some features that made it a little easier for our process and then input that into the machines. So additive manufacturing is, is layer by layer manufacturing. It's taking a layer of powder, it's welding that layer in a particular shape and then doing it again and again and again over a thousand times. The fact is that it was probably more accurately made in the 3D printer than the original manufacturing technology. So the fact that you can actually do that in five days the rapid prototyping element of it is absolutely an ideal scenario for machines of this type. To be able to knock together something like that, which was originally a casting, which at the time somebody would absolutely painstakingly carved out patterns by hand. You know, what a, what a terrific bit of kit. Engineering moves on all the time. Even when the cars were built, we can see a difference between 1920 to 1924. They designed improvements, they made better parts. We've just taken it 100 years further on. After numerous years of work, it's, it's a tremendous result to get this car running. To be honest, right at the start, did I ever think we'd have it fully roadworthy again? It was the heart said yes, the head probably said a bit more unlikely, but the team have stuck with it. Oh, we're immensely proud. Uh, and a huge, huge thanks to the volunteer team that have done this work. These guys have done this in their spare time uh, as a passion at weekends, evenings, so we can't, we can't thank them enough. This is the three-day event commemorating RAF 100, and today we've brought the Ruston car to uh, show it off after its recent restoration. To have the car here is one thing, to see the car physically drive into the yard was a different thing altogether, so iconic car in such a setting, absolutely amazing for us. They're amazed that they're allowed to climb in it and play with it. I said, that's what it's there for. We don't want to lock it away in the museum. It was made by the people of Lincoln after the First World War, and their descendants should enjoy it as much as they did. <laughs>
it's not as well known as some of the other classic cars, but I think we have an opportunity here to promote the car, promote the history, but also the new technology that's been used to bring it back to life. This car, we hope, will come to represent us around the city. People will see it around, I hope, and know what that car is and where that car came from and the heritage of our company today in Lincoln.